Okay, so here's a layout of the horizontal stabilizer. Okay, and all I did was I took a, I have a four by eight workbench. I took some eighth inch masonite, screwed it down. This allows me to draw on it. Um, you can see I laid everything out with a black sharp or a blue sharpie. Okay, and what I did was I struck this line first. Okay. Then I created 90 degree line. And you probably remember this when I did the fuselage. Okay. So I just laid that there. This is one inch. And came up with something that's square. Okay. <clears throat> then what I did was I measured straight up here at 90 degrees. Let's take a look at the plan. Okay. They show seven degrees. Just ignore that. You're going to go straight up over two and then four okay so i started following that and started laying in my numbers and we go by the measurements on the drawing and you can see we can put this station in we can connect this here okay once that's done um so we're really laying out this first okay this is the first piece i laid out made this length here which is nine up here 23 okay tied those in I just ran a line 90 degrees straight up and I made it long okay what I did after that was a radius here and a radius here and what I did was I just used a 10 inch standard dinner plate okay and I just ballparked it no big deal this here they didn't you know Leonard really didn't say anything. I just, there's a kink here. This could be wrong. Not really worried about it. And I just lined it up. The key thing to remember about that is I used the outside. So these radiuses go to the outside. I did that intentionally. Okay. We're going to worry about how to get the tube around it a little bit later. We're going to back this off. I want to make a jig here and a jig here. The most important thing to remember about this is when I go to start fabricating, the very first thing I'm going to fabricate is this bent piece all through here, okay? So I'm going to start at this end, bend it. It's going to let this thing hang out straight, okay? Knowing that I have to run to this edge, because this is that 40, I believe 40, 42 and a half long, I'm going to make sure that as I bend this around, this is straight, okay? So I know where I'm going to be here. I know where I'm going to be here. I really don't care about this radius too much. I mean, the diameter, it, it can be whatever you really want it to be. So uh, once I had that laid out, um, I started doing gussets, right? Now, there's a little bit left of the imagination here. Uh, he called out a couple numbers, two and a half, which seemed a little small to me. So I made it three across this way. Um, Gave us four here, nothing really else there. This, not too much. This, not too much. This, not too much. Scale-wise, I don't know if you can really go by that. So, we're not real worried about that. Um, it's going to be a pretty strong structure. So, what I did was I went four by four, okay? And these dotted lines represent what I'm going to cut out of the aluminum sheet, that 20 thousandths. So I just kind of figured, okay, four here, four here, and straight here, straight here, make an angle, that's my gusset. Is it going to be this, the final product? I don't know, but I bet it's going to be close. Same thing here. I created a rectangle. This is going to be one big piece that gets, you know, bent around. Um, we know we have a support wire here. We know of a support wire here. I came up with three across this way, two and a half this way. And I just kind of made it sort of look like the picture. Again, not real worried about it. Uh, over here, this is three by three. Okay. Uh, back up here, you know, we want to make sure our intersections are correct. Right. Get straight on. I marked which edge on, you know, which side I'm going to follow. Um, so this line here is really irrelevant. I do, I'm going to put a block in here. And, so I had this block, so it's accurate, because I'm going to build two of the identical, identical pieces. So, um, What else? That's a, kind of about it for now. Um, 
these hinges. So this is a hinge center line here and a hinge center line here. Now there is a mistake in the plan. It's not really a mistake. It's just sort of messed up a little bit. Um, these are six inch hinges. Okay. And those are right here. It's called out six inch piano hinges extruded. Well, they give a measurement of 10 inches here. Okay. So we know that that hinge is going to start at 10. Six inch for the hinge, that's 16 inches to here. Well, if you look, this is 16 and a half to here. So obviously, that hinge ends up overlapping. So something is wrong here. This, the numbers are wrong. Do we care? Nah, not really. We know that there's a support wire here, and it only makes sense that you want to hinge somewhat close to that because there's a pressure point there. When that wire comes down and then goes back underneath, and this whole stabilizer is supported, well, you want your hinge to be kind of close to that because it's a it's real solid solid structure out there. So we just sort of shoot from the hip on that. I'm about two inches away from here. You know, just get it close. Uh, this number here for this hinge is called out at six inches. Um, and that's pretty much what I did there. This is the center of the hinge if it was six. I'm not going to use these piano hinges. I'm going to use something different. So uh, that's about it. So I'll just give you a quick overview, okay, and you can see kind of how I laid that out. Nothing groundbreaking, nothing hard to manage. Everything here is something you can do quite easily. So uh, the next step is I'm going to build a little jig here, something to hold this tube so I can bend it. And I'm going to make two of these identical before I do anything else. I'm just going to bend them, done. And uh, we'll just kind of see how that goes. And I'll give you an update on the video.